it's me, Pussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode two of Canada's Drag Race season two. Today our queens were challenged to sing live and dance in what I am officially deeming the best and worst musical of all time. <laughs> and the runway category was Circus Berserkus. And my oh my did this episode have it all. Big tops, sloppy bottoms, and Brooklyn Heights clocking in at a power level of over 9,000. I don't know what Dragon Ball Z stands are called, but that was for y'all. We'll be breaking down all those runways from hottest rat to hottest hot, and then dissecting the rusical. But first, I do want to quickly remind y'all that I've just launched my new merch store at bussyqueen.com, and oh, what's that? I'm wearing the new Bussy Queen metal band top? And you can get your matching tank top at where? Bussyqueen.com. And you can get 10% off when you use promo code BUSSYQUEEN10LAUNCH. Click the link in the description of this video. Now let's see what our little Canadian circus freaks have to offer. First up, it's Cynthia Kiss. This look, I'm not even really sure what she's giving. And I'm not sure she knew what she was giving either. It's an oversized rainbow poncho. Period. I feel like in her head, she was maybe looking more like Detox's jellyfish look, but in reality was just serving the level five magic carp that you have to catch and painfully train to a Gyarados that takes like ages to do. And maybe this is actually some sort of like intellectual commentary on fast fashion and party city drag, but I think it's probably not. This looks a rot, sorry. Next up, one queen's trash is Kimura Amor's outfit. She is serving us everything you find at the end of a circus, AKA all the trash on the floor. I really enjoyed this idea when I was reacting to the episode because the idea is so creative. I love the fun detail of the shoes looking like trash bags, the popcorn and peanuts all over her body creating a bit of a silhouette, but ultimately it did look, I think, a little too much like trash instead of trash turned fashion. And there were also some confusing elements on this, like I wasn't quite sure what that gold headpiece was doing or why her makeup looked like it did. To improve this look, I would love to have seen Kimura take all those trash elements and really convert them into something new instead of serving a look that just looked a tad too much like she covered herself in glue and then rolled around on the floor of a circus at the end of a circus. This look is not trash that I would keep. It's a rat. Next up, it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's Adriana. She is serving as an aerial artist fantasy inspired by Cirque du Soleil. When she originally came down the runway, I didn't know what she was doing though. I was getting bug, dragonfly, sunset dragonfly, but I just didn't understand this was supposed to be like an aerial artist. And part of that could just be because I'm not like super familiar with circus acts. And I think this type of act in a circus is definitely hard to sell in a walked, runway. Overall, this look is certainly not bad. I think she looks really pretty. It's just not giving what I think she thought it was supposed to be gave. So I'm gonna leave this at a warming up. Next up, three, two, one, boom. It's geometric, the human cannonball. And I love that she even had that cannon tube at the beginning of the runway that she came out of to really sell this full fantasy for us. But as fun as this look is, it ended up near the bottom of my list tonight just because, as even Brooke Lynn pointed out, it didn't feel very fresh. I think this look was way too similar to Gigi Good's season 12 promo look down to the helmet and like initials and name on the belt. And was that intentional for her? Probably not, but I do think because there's so many seasons of Drag Race swimming around in people's heads, queens are probably gonna have to be more cautious than normal of creating a look and bringing freshness to it. I mean, this is like the sixth or seventh season of Drag Race this year. I do want to give her praise though for that really unique detail of the ponytail being the fuse that would ignite her coming out of the cannon. Overall, I do like this look and Gia, I think it looks hot. Next up, now you see her, now you don't. It's Suki Doll. Now, did this look deserve to be higher on the list tonight? That is up for debate by you in the comments, but my personal feelings were, it was like she was trying to give us the entire magic act in one 30 second runway, and I think it was just a little too much. Cause I'm like, wow, this red Power Ranger looking white rabbit is really amazing. And then she's doing the actual magic trick of bringing the magician out of the hat, but then she's carrying the big top in the other hand. And then she also has on these like crazy 20 inch glove fingernail things going on. Had she had more time on the runway or perhaps her own slotted show segment Meant to explain and tell the full story of this look, I might have really been in love, but as it was presented, I was a little overwhelmed. But for the uniqueness and chicness alone, I am going to give this look a hot. Next up, Barnum, Bailey, and Ocean Aqua Black Circus is in town. Ocean is bringing us the entire circus, both big tops, one on each hip. 
it's a lot, but she looks damn great in this look. I think OCN's outfit is a really great example of how to tell an extravagant story without overwhelming the viewer. And I also want to point out that the actual pantsuit component of this look is really, really well done and gives her a great silhouette that we see later in the lip sync. And the small details that I would improve on this look are actually nothing to do with the actual look. It's the accessories that she added to this, like the LED light necklace and umbrella. This look is hot. Next up, everyone's favorite showgirl show pony. It's Kendall Jenner. I had a lot of fun with this look, but I will say it did feel a little bit been there, done that. Season 9's gayest ball ever runway, anyone? But I did really enjoy her Vegas showgirl twist on this like pony cosplay fantasy. And overall, I have to commend her on how clean this look is. Every detail is perfect. Every accessory matches and is necessary to the look. I'll be placing a few extra bets on Kendall this season. This look is hot. Next up, furries on my drag race runway? It's not the first time. It's Eve 6000. She says she's serving us insane clown with this one and I will say I was a little concerned because I was like, oh no, another mascot costume. But this was so much more than that. I loved the twist of her not being the mascot animal, but being eaten up and inside of it. I don't know. I really love the perfect attention to detail, the gore and the campy horror of it all. And maybe most impressive, that insane silhouette that this lion has. That is the sexiest lion I think I've ever seen. I'm putting my paws up, baby. This look is hot. Next up, burlesque beards and what more could you ask for? It's Stephanie Prince. I really love the drama of her coming down the runway completely concealed behind her giant fans and then revealing her giant twins. I kind of feel like this look didn't get enough recognition. I think the cleanness of this and the fact that she kind of combined the classic freak show archetype with like a modern sexy circus twist was really fun. She looks amazing. She is gonna be one to watch in the runway every single week, I can tell, and I really can't wait to see what she does. This look is hot. <laughs> And coming in second tonight for me is Isis Couture. She is giving us a mime clown fantasy. I will say there maybe were some more inventive concepts on the runway tonight, but how Isis served this simple clown look was flawless. I love that she made this clown look high fashion. She just has an eye for detail, an eye for what looks good on her body and knows how to serve a damn look. In fact, I don't think the other queens could copy her taste if they tried. This look is and finally, I'm looking into my crystal ball. Ooh, and I see for my hottest hot, Pythia. Obviously. Do I need to say anything here? No, I don't, but I will. Firstly, two heads are better than one. Get you a girl that can do both. And am I seeing double? No. It's just fashion. I love the 20s velour gown that she's got going on. It's fortune teller meets freak show, meets circus, meets fashion show. This was truly her episode and I think has already cemented her as a front runner in this competition. I did also ask my patrons to vote for their hottest haunt over on patreon.com. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my channel, access to exclusive videos, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server and more. And you can join my patron family using the link in the description of this video and they too voted their hottest hot as Pythia. Now let's get into that rusical, cause girl, <laughs> it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, or I guess in modern slang, it was giving the best of both worlds. First, a little conspiracy theory. The queen self-casting was eerily accurate. The three French queens got the Bing Bang Bong group, which had the little French inclusion that we saw from Ocean Aqua Black. Our quirky, lovable queen got the spooky, spooky, quirky roll. The two fashion queens got the leather and lace rolls. The queen that likes to make every moment all about themselves got the Revealiana roll. And our sweet little unassuming deer in the headlights queen got that exact roll. And I'm not saying this was a setup or anything. I'm just saying these queens Queens picked exactly who these roles were written for. Maybe I'm just looking too far into it. Let me know what you're thinking about that in the comments down below. Firstly, let's do the highlights of this musical, which when I say highlights were top tier performances of any musical ever, period. Pythia's Hennywise was insane, hilarious, perfectly sung. I didn't think that the quiet, quirky queen had all of 
this personality inside of them, I am truly shooketh to the core. Obviously a hot performance. And Cynthia's singing ability, I think was kind of overlooked tonight. She opened that effing rusical like no other rusical has ever been opened before. My jaw was on the floor. This bitch could be on Broadway. She's that good. And I love what Geometric did with their character, giving an almost Dorian Electra style makeup and hair to this character. And Kendall was the perfect narrator of the whole thing. And for as good as the good was in this rusical, the bad was bad. Firstly, the clown group. Okay, bing bang bong. Mama, what was that? What was that? I have never in my life seen a segment that chaotic, unorganized, and badly performed on Drag Race ever. That takes the cake. Or should I say the pie? And I think their little performance as a group was made worse by the fact that they were all essentially in quick drag. Had they been allowed to serve like a good look, maybe they could have saved a little, but my God. And then I saw Stephanie and Isis in the leather and lace section and I was like, please end this now. But I think we do have to ask how much of this really was these queens fault. For example, I think Hollywood Jade was a little bit harsh on the choreo for the two groups. Considering that say some queens like let's say Cynthia got to essentially sit on a bed for most of the performance. Put yourselves in these queens shoes. Imagine trying to get into drag, perform a musical that you learned probably yesterday the day before, sing it live, and do choreo. And there were also some obvious misses in the costumes provided to some of the characters like Reveliana. Again, not something she brought and it wasn't her fault, but like why was she given such a bad reveal if that was her character. Which to be clear doesn't excuse her performance, which was not great, but definitely was not as bad as the two groups. I was just sitting back watching and thinking, wow, like they really could have rehearsed this with them a few more times, made some of the choreo simpler or done like literally anything to help them, but they didn't. <laughs> But thank God the queens who were good were amazing, and they truly saved this episode. Anyways, the judges choose Ocean Aqua Black and Isis Couture as the bottom two for this episode, and I'm not superstitious, but I will point out those were the only two queens to open umbrellas indoors during this episode. Coincidence? I'll let you decide. And overall, I do think this bottom two was appropriate, those two being the worst of their respective groups. Like, no, I didn't want to see either of these queens leave this early in the competition, but they both flopped pretty hard. As for who I think won lip sync, I have to give it to Isis, although I think Ocean and Isis both get hots for me on this lip sync. I was just a little more impressed with how much Isis was able to use the stage, whereas Ocean sort of planted herself on the stage right and didn't leave once she got there. And the win tonight does go to Pythia, of whom there was no other option to give a win to. But let me know what you're thinking about all this. Who would you have put in the bottom? Who do you think won this challenge? Pythia. And let me know what you're thinking about Canada's Drag Race season two so far down in the comments below. And as always, I want to say thanks to you for watching today's video and give a special shout out to Alex Abery and Kyle Cotian, who've just joined my Patreon at the highest tier, and Angelica LaFontaine and Nina Uzoku, who just joined my Patreon at the hottest highest tier, and Lark. Angel, Adaluda, Cyrus, Felicia, Goaty P, Jared Rax, JB, Joseph, Josh Marchant, JP in Dallas, Laura, Matthew, Maxi Lo, wow, Miss F Neely, OG Debuse, Rochambeau, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, Topher A, Triton, and Billy, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye.